It's Thursday, March 19, and time for your Bobby This Today morning news update. Topping the news at this hour, the Hillary term comes to an abrupt end as Education Minister Santia Bradshaw declares schools closed as of today. The notice came last evening, hours after the Barbados Union of Teachers and the Barbados Secondary Teachers Union expressed dissatisfaction with the outcome of yesterday's online consultation with the Ministry of Education on the COVID-19 coronavirus. After the consultation this afternoon with stakeholders, I made representation to the regular pre-cabinet parliamentary group meeting this evening, and it has been agreed that in light of several factors, including the fact that Thursday and Friday of this week were scheduled sports days, and that next week is the final week of term, that the current school term shall be brought forward to an end Thursday, 19th March 2020. We shall continue consultations with stakeholders as to the way forward. Now, before the minister's evening announcement, the BUT had served notice of what it described as legitimate absentee issues, especially among members with high-risk health problems following her ministry's decision to keep schools open amid the coronavirus concerns. Meantime, there was no updated announcement about the May 5th Barbados Secondary School's entrance examination, also known as the 11 Plus. Yesterday, Minister Bradshaw told the online consultation students would sit the exam in a staggered format. The situation is so fluid right now that what the most that we can do is prepare in the event that there is um, community transmission. And therefore, that will obviously impact on our ability to conduct the examination on May 5th. So what we have looked at is staggering the exam because we have control over that particular exam because that is run locally. And we've looked at being able to stagger it in the initial stages by one week and then we will continue to stagger depending on what the, the medical evidence suggests and what the advice that is given would suggest. Health officials will give daily updates on the island's COVID-19 status. Yesterday, Health Minister Lieutenant Colonel Jeffrey Bostick and Acting Chief Medical Officer Dr. Anton Best started the process with further details about the first two confirmed coronavirus cases. Dr. Best told a press conference officials began conducting contact tracing on Tuesday with regards to the two female patients now in isolation. Contact tracing, as you would appreciate, is one of the key strategies that we use in public health to be able to identify cases and once we through uh, the, that index case so we have two index cases and contact tracing has begun and it would have started from yesterday and it continues um, and will continue for the next few days have you been able to track down people who were on so the so what so what we have done for the contact tracing so far is identify the people that we need to approach we would have asked those persons have you had any symptoms in keeping with COVID-19? In addition to that, at least one of those persons who were identified through contact tracing have been tested. But this is a process that's going to take the next few days for each case. Prime Minister Mia Motley has dismissed the notion that Barbadians are hoarding supplies as residents continue to rush to supermarkets and shops to stock up on items following the announcement that the island had recorded its first two cases of the coronavirus. She told the online Ministry of Education COVID-19 consultation, residents were simply being proactive. That there really is something special about being Barbadian. Mm -hmm. Barbadians have a different outlook. And it is perhaps why sometimes others in the region may poke at us, but the truth is that we tend to be reflective of measures. And I'll give you a very powerful example. Everybody accused people yesterday of hoarding. Bajans were hoarding yesterday. Bajans understood from the night before and the news yesterday that we have a battle to face and that they were getting their supplies to button down. Mm -hmm. Long haul. There's regional and international news after this short break. It's 
festive Friday at the Bridgetown Night Market at Pelican Craft Center. Kick off the weekend this Friday from 4 p.m. to midnight with loads of food, drinks, and entertainment. Get ready for crop over with the Rhythm Root Street Parade. Party like it's Kadooman Day on the street around Pelican Village with costume reveler, music, and more. It's festive Friday. It's festive Friday at the Bridgetown Night Market at Pelican Village Center from 4 p.m. to midnight. Admission free. To news from our regional neighbors now, Bermuda confirms its first two cases of COVID-19. Premier David Burt told a news conference yesterday the victims are both residents who traveled from the United States and from Britain. The two cases are unconnected. Both individuals who were identified early are recovering and did not require hospitalization. They are presently isolated and have been isolated since they became symptomatic. The Ministry of Health is working closely with other ministries across the government to rapidly investigate the situation and to help prevent the spread of COVID-19. Our chief concern is how many people had close contact with the individuals once symptoms developed. In that regard, we are currently taking the following actions making sure the individuals are receiving appropriate treatment and remain isolated, and interviewing the individuals in close contacts, such as family members, to obtain detailed information on their travel history and exposures, and then monitoring the family members to see if they become ill. Currently, they are self-quarantined, and this may require collecting and testing specimens from those individuals. And finally, an initial assessment by the International Labour Organization on the impact of COVID-19 on the global world of work says the effects of the virus will be far-reaching, pushing almost 25 million people into unemployment and even more into underemployment and working poverty. But the ILO's Director General Guy Ryder says if an international coordinated policy response is taken, as happened in the 2008-2009 global financial crisis, then the impact on global unemployment could be significantly lower. Well, the figures the ILO's put out uh, today uh, are that in 2020, this pandemic uh, could cost us on different growth assumptions between 5.3 million jobs in the best case scenario, up to nearly 25 million jobs in the worst case. And just put that in perspective, in the 2008-2009 global financial crisis, we lost 22 million jobs. So you see, potentially at least, we're in the same territory as we were uh, back then. I think the real thing we have to all keep in mind is there's nothing inevitable about all of this. So much depends on our capacity to put in place the right policy responses. Look, I think we need to act, the ILO thinks we need to act in, in three areas. Firstly, and I think many workers, many enterprises are living through this today, we have to get things right at the workplace. So we have to protect workers, basic occupational safety and health considerations, the right sort of safety material has to be available. Uh, then we have to look at alternative ways of working, telework, which is now coming to many of us. We have to get this right at the level of the enterprise. And then nationally, we need to support enterprises in difficulty. That's news. But for the very latest, visit us at www.barbidestoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.